You don't have to go to China to see a subway system exploding in size. 10 years ago, this American subway system had just four lines and would barely register in the minds of international transit connoisseurs. But then the system added two more lines in the 2010s and initiated plans for three more in the 2020s. Not to mention the various extensions. This system is the fastest growing around by a country mile. And it's changed its entire city around it to be more transit oriented. But it isn't in the United States. This American metro system is in Santiago, Chile. And if you stick with me, I'll tell you how we can learn from Santiago and take those learnings and put them into action in cities around the US and around the world. Let's dive in. If you're new here, my name's Reese, and this is RM Transit, a channel about transit all around the world. Consider subscribing because it helps a ton. Santiago's metro buildout hasn't really just been respectable in terms of the Americas, it's been internationally notable. Before 2017, the system had just four lines, or five if you think line 4A should count as its own fully independent line, when it's really just a branch that was turned into a separate line. And then it added two new lines, line 6 and line 3, with automated trains and platform screen doors of course, in 2017 and 2019 respectively, boosting the network's total station count from 117 to 136. And with those lines being very successful, things are accelerating further. Construction is already ongoing on the new Line 7, which like all new lines in Santiago, and approximately zero in the continental US, is fully automated and has platform screen doors. Santiago Metro is also moving forward with two other new lines, Line 8 and Line 9. And it has three different Metro extensions in varying levels of completion. When all of that is said and done, Santiago Metro will add 48 more stations, taking it from 117 stations just a few years ago to 184 stations in around 10 years. And going from 117 to 184 in just a bit over a decade doesn't even get across the scale of this achievement. That's because so much construction isn't new stations, but rather new interchange stations, where a new set of platforms are built under an existing set. Santiago's metro isn't really extending much further out of the city center. Instead, it's just becoming far denser, covering more neighborhoods and providing more capacity. That being said, I do think there's a lot to learn from Santiago's design of its metro network, which is a grid where most interchange stations have at most two lines going through them, simplifying construction. Santiago has doubled the number of lines in its metro, and it has increased its overall number of stations by around 50%. That means adding roughly 70 kilometers of new line. And I want to show you what a similarly scaled expansion could look like in other cities. But first, how did Santiago actually achieve this? In a word, or two, political will and cost-effective construction. And to be clear, those are costs adjusted for purchasing power parity. I'm not trying to pull one over on you here because labor and materials might be less expensive in Chile. I've covered why subways cost so much in certain parts of the world in a previous video, but Santiago is actually uniquely good at building subways. And the Eno Center for Transportation actually has a fantastic and very detailed report on some of the things Santiago has done to keep costs low. I'll link it down below and summarize some of the key points for you. The most basic thing you should know about the Santiago Metro is that it was built based on a master plan created by French consultants some number of decades ago. This is actually a common feature of a lot of metro systems around the world, including in Shanghai, for example. Ultimately, the long and short of it is that Santiago has been building consistently for decades, whether new lines, extensions, or otherwise, tweaking the original plans and also protecting for future infrastructure, which helps a lot. By building lots of projects from extensions to new lines, Santiago Metro and its employees have learned to build a good metro. They don't do P3s, they have an entirely in-house engineering and planning team which is able to draft up plans for new projects, slice them up into smaller segments, and then have the private sector bid to build them. By breaking the projects down into smaller segments, more contractors can potentially compete for them, increasing competition and driving down prices. But that's only possible because Santiago Metro also has the management expertise to bring the individual components together into a coherent metro project. Because Santiago Metro has been building a lot, they've been able to standardize designs, bringing down cost and complexity. And the low cost of construction and really, really strong ridership, better than Berlin for example, means that Santiago Metro actually makes enough money to fund some of its expansion itself. That is amazing and rather unprecedented today. 
There's also a lot less intergovernmental bickering in Chile than in the US, for example, since a lot of transit funding and regulation decisions happen at the national level. The national government can go to Santiago Metro with funding for the next round of projects, Santiago Metro can take the funding, and it can design and engineer those projects itself. Now, Eno does mention that Santiago has really good soil for tunneling, but it's not all easy. They still do environmental assessments, and Santiago is in a major earthquake zone, though historically the metro has actually performed better in earthquakes than roads, for example. The stations also aren't bargain basement. They often look better than stations in the US and Canada, despite being far less expensive to build. To get a sense for what a 70 km rapid transit expansion could look like for a number of different cities, I took it upon myself to draft up some plans for New York, London, and Washington DC. Worth noting, I did scale the number of kilometers down in DC and New York to account for the longer trains, which necessarily mean longer stations. Don't take these as super refined plans, rather they're just ideas of what these cities could do if they did the way Santiago do. In New York, I drew together roughly 40 kilometers of new subway projects, mostly from Alan Levy's fantastic Assume Scandinavian Cost Map, which I'll link somewhere down below. If New York did the same size build as Santiago, it could extend the L to Secaucus Junction and the 7 to Hoboken, using a shared tunnel across the Hudson. You could also extend the N to LaGuardia, a plan which was scuttled because of high costs. Beyond that, let's extend the E to Queens Village, the 4 and 5 all the way down Nostrand Avenue, and the R to Staten Island. And the cherry on top of that, completing the 2nd Avenue subway all the way to Hanover Square. In London, you could build roughly 70 kilometers of new tube lines, and I started with ideas that are already out there, like extending the Baker Loo line to Lewisham and extending the Northern line to Clapham Junction. Beyond those, I'd also extend the Central line up to Harlow. Next up, I'd take the DLR through Central London, from Bank to Barbican and Russell Square, all the way to Edgware Road, providing some extra capacity and stop density north of the Central line. I'd also then go on and continue extending the Baker Loo line all the way to Thamesmead via Woolwich, as well as the Northern Line to Hammersmith, which is a bit of a unique idea, I know. Londoners, I'd love to hear what you think about that. I'd also add an entirely new Eastern Interceptor tube line, which could be fully automated and have platform screen doors, traveling from Bromley to Canary Wharf, Mile End, Walthamstow, and then up to Tottenham. And what about DC, a city which, under new management, has its metro service on the upswing? Well, could this center for government become a center for good transit construction governance? We could start with some lower cost light rail projects, including extending the purple line down to the green line via FedEx Field and the blue line. That would form a very nice semicircle around the north and east of the city. There would also be another orbital light rail line, let's call it the pink line, running from Crystal City to Potomac Yard and then through central urban Alexandria, across to National Harbor, and then up north to the Green Line again, sort of replacing one of the options Metro has previously proposed. For Metro extensions, you could build a new city center tunnel for the orange and silver lines via Georgetown that would add capacity and reliability. You could also divert the blue and yellow lines through urban Alexandria along with the new light rail line I just proposed, and extend the Green Line to Joint Base Andrews, all within the scope of Santiago's expansion. And to be clear, this is just what would be possible if these cities built the same scale of expansion as Santiago, around 70 kilometers. That's not to mention that they're all spending more money than Santiago on new transit, but getting far less. While Santiago is spending a couple billion dollars to build several new metro lines, New York spent nearly 20 billion just to build Eastside Access. That's more than enough for the Chileans to build a whole second Santiago metro in another city. So if New York and London kept building, but got their costs down much lower, closer to Santiago, even double the price of Santiago, they could build a crazy amount of new metro and regional rail. And that's really Santiago's subway secret. Low costs enable big expansion. You stop having so much fighting about what priority to choose because you can just build all of the priorities. And well-managed transit growth spurs more growth. People like new things, but they need a next thing to actually support, and in Santiago, there's always another project happening that people can get behind. And once mom's apartment and your friend's apartment have metro stations near them, you're gonna want one too. Thanks for watching.